How's it going folks? In this video, I show you how to use the Final Cut Pro 10 Stabilizer 2.0 from Pixel Film Studios. This is an awesome plugin that provides more than just basic stabilization. It allows you to pull off some awesome looking effects for your videos, just like this. How's it going ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. In this video, we're looking at the Final Cut Pro 10 Stabilizer 2.0 from Pixel Film Studios. Now when you think of a stabilization plugin, you're probably thinking about fixing handheld shots that are real shaky, and this can do that. But what I really like about this plugin is that it goes beyond that. You can really pull off some really awesome looking effects. You can make some mundane footage, for instance, me just jogging in place. You can turn that into something just boring, into something that looks really, really cool. So check out our tutorial right now as I walk you through the various features of the Final Cut Pro 10 Stabilizer 2.0. And also don't forget, we have a special coupon down below in the description for 30% off for the first 500 customers. So let's head over to the Mac and let me show you how to use it. Okay, so here is that clip I showed you earlier that is just me jogging in place about as boring as boring can be. But never fear, the Final Cut Pro 10 Stabilizer 2.0 is here. I'm gonna show you how to use it right now. So all you need to do is drag the effect in your effects panel over to your clip, just like that. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uncheck the apply rotation and apply scale data because we're not gonna do any scaling or rotation tracking. And then you wanna click on where it says track editor. So we'll just click that. And that brings up the super easy to use track editor. So first things first, we're going to move the playhead all the way to the beginning because we want to track from the very beginning of the clip. All right, so once we do that, now we can either zoom in or zoom out. Uh, this doesn't affect the tracking or anything like that. It's just for your ease of use. That along with the hand tool allows you to pinpoint exactly what you want to track. So that's what we're going to do right now. We want to track these Powerbeats Pro that are currently in my ears. So we're right where we want to be. We can take the tracker shape and then move that right over in the center of the headphones. And then we just drag out on the drag handles, just like this, to align it right within the tracking area, because this is exactly what we want to track. We want to track these headphones. So you can finesse it a little bit, get it exactly right. And once you're happy with the location, you can move on to the next step, and that is increasing the track quality. So we're just going to drag that all the way to the right set it to 100%. And for tracking type, we're going to keep it position only. We're not going to do any scaling or rotations like I mentioned earlier. And then you just click where it says track forward and it will start tracking frame by frame by frame. This is a 30 frames per second timeline. So there's going to be 30 frames for each second, right? So it's going to take a while. In other words, even when it's just like five seconds long, it's going to take a little while, but that's okay. That's the point it's automatically doing the keyframing for you. You don't have to go in there and manually keyframe. You can see which frame it's on right there in the upper left-hand corner. So we have 177 frames total. Now, of course, you can use the track editor to manually keyframe. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, I shot this video in 4K. I highly recommend that you shoot at the highest resolution that you can because like all stabilization plugins, it's going to compensate for the movements of the camera by zooming in a little bit by cropping out some of the data on the edges of the frame. So the more resolution, the better. All right, so our tracking is completed. I've sped it up a little bit and you can see all the different keyframes there that it makes by itself automatically. So the next step is to export all the keyframe data back to the timeline. So we just click the export data button in the bottom right hand corner and it'll write all that glorious keyframe data back to the timeline. It's super simple and it's super easy. All right, there we go. We're gonna let the timeline render and it's rendered. All right, so let's go ahead and play it back and see what we got there. So you can see already as I scrub the timeline, it looks way more interesting than what we had at first. Wouldn't you agree? So it's staying dead center on the Powerbeats Pro, and that's why it helps to, when you're shooting your video, to keep the subject in the center of the frame if at all possible. Now when zooming occurs to compensate for camera movements, you may see mirroring at the edges of the frame. And this occurs so you're not left with just an empty space. You can turn on the guide so you can see the cutoff point exactly. You'll see the little black areas where the cutoff occurs. So if you look closely, you see it there on the right side of the frame especially. You may notice a little bit at the bottom as well. 
So what we can do, see it right there on the right side, what we can do, what Pixel Frame Studios has done is they have incorporated handy stabilization offset controls. So you have offset scaling, so you can zoom in to the frame and you have offset scaling on the X and Y axis. So these controls allow you to finesse the frame to get it just right so you don't have any blank data on the edges where the motion tracking technology has compensated for the camera movements. So it doesn't take long, you just play around with the stabilization controls, play it back, see how it looks, see if you have any edges there using the handy guides that are built right into the plugin. And now we play it back after it renders, of course. All right, so there we go, and it looks excellent. So no edges cut off at all. This is definitely some next level stuff right here. I'm telling you, it looks so much better than that uninteresting, boring, original, jogging in place video. So if I can turn a simple clip like that into something that's interesting, just imagine what you can do with your clips. For emphasis, let's just go back to our original project and let's play both of these clips back to back so you can compare them. So here is the original jogging clip. And here is the new and improved clip. Thanks to Pixel Film Studios, Final Cut Pro Stabilizer 2.0. All right, so let's talk about manual keyframing for a little bit. Now, here's a clip that I'm going to track. I'm gonna track the headphones as well. You can probably already tell why I'm gonna to need to use manual keyframing for this example. I'll explain in full here in just a second. So I'm gonna drag the plug into the clip. I'm gonna open up the track editor and we're gonna drag the playhead to the beginning. And since we've been here before, I'm going to go a lot faster this time. So I'm gonna take the tracking shape, make sure that the headphones are right within the bounding box here. Set my tracking quality, zoom out, and we're gonna track forward. Now here's the problem. When I move my hand across the frame, I cover the headphones and I make the tracking shape jump out of place because it's no longer able to track that shape because it, it was covered for a frame or two. So to fix that, I'm gonna stop the tracking and then right here on the track editor timeline, I'm gonna drag the playhead right to the place where the problem occurs. So, or at least right before where the problem occurs. So if you hold option and click on one of the keyframes, it deletes a keyframe manually. Or you can hold shift, drag, right click and select remove keyframes. So that's what you're gonna do. Remove all those bad keyframes. We wanna set our playhead right over the last good keyframes. So that's what we're going to do right now. And once we do that, we're going to add two offset position keyframes for the X and Y axis. So now I'm gonna use my right arrow key to move to the next frame, and then I'm going to manually move the tracking shape to the exact spot where it should be. And that's pretty easy. I can see the headphones there, just move it up like that. And I can manually add keyframe after keyframe for as long as I need to do so. Now the hand's out of the way, so I can go back to tracking automatically, track forward just like that, and see that problem? It's not a problem at all. If automatic tracking has a problem, just go in there, manually track where you need it, and then go back to automatic tracking. It's super simple, it's super easy. So it's gonna capture the remaining few frames, and in just a second we'll be finished, and then we can export all this tracking data back to the project, and we'll see how it turns out. All right, so let's click the export data button right there at the bottom of the interface. All right, so it's exporting. And there we go. So now we're gonna wait for it to render. It's rendered. So let's go ahead and play back the original clip. And now here is the updated clip. So just like before, I need to change up the stabilization controls, change up the X and Y axis offset, change up the scaling offset to get this just right. So we'll do that right now. Looking pretty good. We could probably zoom in just a little bit more. So we'll do that. There we go. So ladies and gentlemen, that is how you use the Final Cut Pro 10 Stabilization 2.0 plugin from Pixel Film Studios. It's super simple, it's super easy, and you can really add a lot to your footage. Not only do you have the basic stabilization concepts, but you can really add stabilization effects that add more to your videos, that really make it stand out, that really make it pop. Folks, be sure to use the code 9to5pixel for 30% off the Final Cut Pro 10 Stabilization 2.0 plugin.
And special thanks to Pixel Film Studios for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube.